Okay, then so here I've introduced some special modeling considerations um, to make the constraint still follow the balance flow rule. Okay, for example, this case, look at this one. Suppose the total flow into node 3 and 4 must be at least 50 and 60 respectively. How would you model this one? So suppose the total flow into node 3. OK, let's look at the node 3. Node 3's total inflow is what? x13 and uh, x23, right? It says, OK, the total flow into this must be at least 50. So greater than or equal to 50. OK, and then for node 4, we would write uh, 2, 4 plus x. Oh, sorry, 1, 4 plus x, 2, 4 need to be greater than or equal to 60. So these would be two constraints that we add for this problem. But these two constraints do not follow the balance of flow rule. If we want to write a constraint in the format, that's uh, inflow minus outflow, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, equal to the demand or supply there. How can we change this uh, graph, change this network? so that uh, this constraint is still <coughs> following the balance of flow rule. Or plus, we add some side constraints. <laughs> Are you trying to I suggest something? I have an idea, but I'm not sure if it's right. Um, OK. You take the 50 in your constraint and move it to the other side of the inequality. OK. I'm not sure how to show that in the model. Move to the other side of the inequality. OK, OK, on the right track. But what's the 50? The it's, it's still not inflow minus outflow, right? But you can, you can, you can modify it, yes, on the right track. So what, what Caleb is suggesting is, OK, let's move it. So I think what you are thinking is that uh, the 1, 3, and the 2, 3, these are inflows, right? So you want it to be inflow minus outflow, right? So these are inflows. OK, so let's say inflow minus outflow. Can we set this to be an outflow? Or instead of a minus this 50 here, can we add an outflow and make that outflow um, than equal to 50? If we, if we can do this, then it's the format that's uh, preferred, right? So we have inflow minus outflow constraint. And besides, we only have a side constraint, which is that outflow greater than equal to 50. You guys remember what, uh, what we're talking about here? Um, I just said <laughs> you will get the integer constraint, in integer solutions, for sure. That's the benefit. If you only have a balance flow rule constraints plus some side constraints, you don't need to add integer solution, integer constraint, and it's guaranteed you will get integer solutions. That's the benefit. And the benefits of not adding integer constraint is that you can get sensitivity analysis report. And it's solved much quickly, much more quickly. OK, so what we're trying to do now is change that problem into constraint when follow the balance flow rule and just some side constraints. <coughs> OK, back to here. So we're trying to change this one constraint into a format that's inflow minus outflow. And that outflow can be x something. And since it's outflow, then should be x3 something, right? So inflow minus outflow. Outflow should be coming from node 3 x3 something, I'll say x3, 3i, s3j here, OK? And then plus that, besides that, we have uh, x3j greater than or equal to 50, because we do want this, uh, this, 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 this condition to be met, OK? So should I reveal the result for you? <laughs> OK, right. Right, right. It's, it's the same the way I see it, regardless of how you write it. 
But if you add this, then you won't. Uh, you, 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 if you just add a constraint like this, it's not guaranteed to get uh, integer solution. For example, in this case, say we are, we are transporting uh, cars. And we want to decide how many cars to transport on each of those routes. If you just uh, add a constraint oh, like this. Mm -hmm. Constraints are already moved in this one step. Right? How would Solver uh, identify between the two types of constraints that you have? The first one is info plus outflow equals zero. Oh, it will. It will identify. Okay. Based on the, in, like the, like for us, how do I identify? We identify from the, 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 the subscript, right? Like the one three means uh, it's a, a inflow to node three. And it's outflow from node one. So if you just have one time, then it would differentiate. So based on like the node number, it will differentiate. Uh, when we implement, we will see that okay. based on the node number, it, it you can differentiate the inflow and outflow. Okay. Okay, but back to here, how do we change this uh, this uh, this constraint to the way that's preferred? Should I reveal the result? OK, here. <coughs> Let's add a, a dummy node between the 1 and the 3. OK, so that's, that's what I wanted to use, right? I want to have an outflow and set that outflow to be greater than equal to 50. So that's here. We add this dummy node between node 1 and the 3, and so we can write x1 30 plus x2 30. So these are the, the inflows. Subtract minus the outflow, which is that x 33 need to be equal to 0. Here we have 0 demand. Okay. And we just set that x 33 less than equal to 50. So with these two constraints, yeah, we're uh, oh, is that greater than? <laughs> I think, yes. Yeah, it's greater than. Thank you. Should be greater than. <coughs> so these two constraints uh, replace the original constraint, which is x13 uh, plus x23, greater than equal to 50. OK. And with these two constraints, this one is the balance of flow rule constraint. And this one is just a simple side constraint that we can add. OK. And with this uh, transformation, we can guarantee that we get integer solutions without uh, adding integer constraints. OK, so that's one example. <coughs> and the other example, um, this is more simple. This is just saying, OK, uh, for example, there are two different ways to go between node 1 and the 2, and they have different cost. Um, that happens, right? Um, you can go to a freeway, or you can go, go through a tollway. Uh, but uh, both ways have a different capacity. Uh, when the freeway is really jammed, maybe you will go to the tollway. Okay, and in this case, the cost is different. And to um, <coughs> differentiate the two different arcs, uh, one way to do it is to add another dummy node here. Um, set this uh, cost to be zero, and put this x dollar here to here. So you have uh, um, instead you will have x one ten, x ten two to represent this uh, upper arc here. OK, so that's uh, another thing. And this third thing, this one is really inter interesting. Look at this one. <coughs> In this problem, what, what it's saying that uh, we have uh, 100 uh, supplies at uh, each of those supply nodes. So in total, your total supply equals to be 20, 200. OK, and the total demand. Is what? 155, right? 
So you have enough supply to meet the demand. And because of this relationship, you would write your constraint as uh, inflows minus outflows greater than equal to the demand or supply. Okay. However, if you look at the upper bound on those arcs, so this upper bound is 40, and this upper bound is 35. That means in total, how many units can go to node 3? That's 75. Okay. That's, uh, that's the same with this uh, demand here. Okay, but what about this lower node? Three, 30 and 35, that's the upper bound. That's how much maximum flow can go through these two arcs. So in total, only 65 units can go to this node 4. Okay. But uh, node 4 has a demand being 80. That means node 4's demand cannot be met, right? So if you set your constraint to be greater than or equal to, what you will get? <coughs> you will get invisible solution, right? So, so what I'm saying is that, okay, because of the total supply and total demand cons uh, relationship, you will use greater than or equal to. So for node 4, you would have uh, inflows minus outflow when there's no outflow. We then go to the demand there, right? The demand is 80. However, you will have another side constraint, which is 1, 4, let's say equal to 30 because of this value here, and you have x, 2, 4, let's say equal to 35. And with these three constraints, you will get invisible solution. Okay. Then what do we do? What should we do? We know for sure because this is invisible, we have to change this sign to be less than or equal to, right? However, when we change this to less than or equal to, what, what happens to the other constraint? Do we change the other constraint too or? But if we change the other constraints, what happens to the total relationship, the, the relationship between the total supply and total demand? So what we're going to do is to modify this network, okay? Because we know that uh, this sign here has to be less than or equal to in order for us to find uh, a feasible solution here. Okay, <coughs> this sign here has to be less than or equal to for us to find a feasible solution. There's no, no way to, to, to change this to be greater than or equal to. Okay, and then we know when we have less than or equal to constraints, that means that the total supply need to be less than total demand, so that uh, it, it follows that balance flow rule constraint. Okay, but uh, here we have uh, more supply than the demand. Let's just add a dummy node that uh, that's, that's, a, that's another demand node. Okay, we, we add, uh, we, we just assume there is another node that uh, uh, requires some demand. So, so that's, okay, currently we have 200 and here we have 155. Let's just add another node that requires 100 units or at least 45 units of demand. And if we add that to demand node, then our total, the relationship between the total supply and total demand will be switched. Okay. So what are we trying to do here? Okay. <coughs> we add this uh, dummy demand node here. You can add it other places too. Okay. We just, I just added it here. So this dummy demand node, um, I add like, okay, let's say this one has the 200 unit of demand. We just want to make sure that the total supply and demand relationship is switched. Now we have only 200 uh, um, units of demand, uh, supply in total. So total supply equals to be still 200, but the total demand is the original 155 plus this 200 here. So we know that, okay, for all the constraints that follow the balance of flow rule, we're going to use less than or equal to because we don't have enough supply to meet the demand. Okay. 
and we set the cost to ship on these uh, to to this uh, dummy node to be really high. You see here nine nine nine, which is like really high number. And what's the purpose? Purpose is saying okay, we don't ship to this dummy node unless necessary. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, because we have to fulfill the re relationship between them, and all of our constraints now are changed to be total supply, um, uh, inflow minus outflow. Let me write here. Ah, I have a place. Okay, so the total. Uh, sorry. Mm. Now that's something I talked about last week. Let's see if you guys remember how to interpret this. So now it's all inflows minus outflows less than or equal to the supply or demand. <coughs> and considering this node, it's uh, inflow minus outflow um, less than or equal to the demand here. And since it has a really high value, and we all know that in, in those uh, transportation problems, if we are given the unit transportation cost on each arc, then we are usually minimizing the total cost to ship on the entire network, right? And with this very high cost here, we're not shipping here unless we have to. Okay, so when we don't have enough supply to meet the demand, um, how, how do we interpret this con constraint? For example, at the supply node, what, what does that mean? You guys remember the supply is uh, <coughs> represented by negative values, right? So when you add negative sign on both sides, <coughs> it's the outflows less than or equal to the, the, the actual supply node. So what we are saying is, uh, um, for the supply node, okay. So let's just, uh, um, for example, for this node, what we are trying to do is uh, we say inflows, okay. There is no inflows, outflow or outflow. So x one zero minus x one three minus x one four less than equal to the negative one hundred, and we put a dollar um, negative sign on both sides, multiply. Then it's x10 plus x13 plus x14 greater than or equal to 100. We're well, saying because we don't have enough supply to meet the demand, we're sending out all we have. Okay, and then for the demand node here, it will be x10 plus x20. Inflows minus outflow, there is no outflow. That's an equal to 200. <coughs> and what we are saying by this constraint is saying, since we don't have enough supply to meet the demand, no one should get more than what they required. Okay, like here it required 200, or say less than equal to 200. And based on those costs, the network will decide which nodes demand to fulfill first. For example, in this case, <coughs> this is a five dollar, four dollar, six. Uh, uh, they are the same, but this one, this is a forty, thirty. So which one do you think will fulfill first, three or four? Yeah. Just by estimation. Yeah. Is that cheaper? Yeah. But this one is six dollars. Oh, here, oh, it's a four and uh, three. Okay, it's four and a three, and this is a five and a six. So four will be fulfilled first, right? And then it will go to node three, and then it will go to node zero. Um, and the, in this cases, you may need to use this in your, in your case study in chapter five, okay? And in this cases, uh, you may need to have a separate cell that's calculate the actual shipping cost which means not including shipping costs on this one. Okay, but in your objective function, you have to include these ones in order for the problem to solve. 
But the objective function, that's, that's one case that's where the objective function value will be different from the actual shipping cost. Because uh, the, this, this dummy node is imaginary. And these uh, number 999 are, we just use a, very, really, a really high value just to make sure that uh, we don't ship to this node unless necessary, unless we have to make the constraint work. Okay, any question here? No? Okay, so that's uh, all the special modeling constraints. 